I can't find the charger to this camera. It's driving me crazy. Hi, welcome to the show where I talk about obscure movies you've probably never heard of, but I have on vinyl. I might actually wear this today. Today we're talking about The Thief of Baghdad. Now that's The Thief of Baghdad from 1940, not 1924. Now some of you might be saying, Thief of Baghdad, that's not obscure at all. And you're right, in fact it was a huge hit when it came out, and it won several Academy Awards. It was actually the first movie to use blue screen technology, way before computers were a thing. But, that was almost 75 years ago. And before a few months ago, I had never heard of the movie. So I'm assuming everyone else on YouTube is as ignorant as I am. Now some people might say that a movie from 1940 is just too old and they'd never watch it. But I bet you've seen this movie. Toto? we're not in Kansas anymore. That actually came out a year earlier, 1939. Now, The Thief of Baghdad was a huge influence on tons of films and video games. When I was a kid, my favorite Disney movie was Aladdin. It had the coolest characters, Aladdin was a pimp, and who can forget the genie? I watched it all the time. But when I watched The Thief of Baghdad, I realized Aladdin borrowed a lot from this movie. Now, the story's a little different. Instead of Aladdin, this is about Ahmed. Ahmed is a blind beggar on the street with a faithful dog companion. But he's taken to the palace, and all the girls there ask him what his deal is, and he starts telling the story of how he was once a king. When he was the king of Baghdad, he had an advisor, actually called a Grand Vizier. His name was Jafar. Jafar convinces King Ahmed to go out into the city, disguised as a beggar, so he can learn what it's like to live in Baghdad as the common people do. One night, when darkness falls, leave your palace, go among your people, mix with the crowds, go into their houses, Listen, observe, and remember. Tonight, Jaffa. Tonight. King Ahmed goes among the townspeople and discovers that everyone thinks he's an asshole. A liberator indeed. Not while Ahmed is king. Because nobody recognizes him and he looks like a beggar, Jafar takes the opportunity to throw him in jail so he can take the throne for himself. Arrest him, put him in prison. When he says he's a king, tell them he's a madman. His friends and all who might be loyal to him must be destroyed. In jail, Ahmad meets a lovable little street thief named Abu. Hmm. You are not mad. And maybe we shall watch the sunrise from over the river. Didn't you hear the jailer? As the sun rises. As the sun rises? We'll take a boat. Go down to the sea. I've never seen the sea. Abu is an experienced thief, so as soon as he was thrown in jail, he pickpocketed the key, and together they escape. Their plan is to go to the river, take a boat, and escape to another town called Basra. Don't you think if the king knew, he'd be merciful? The king was a fool. I hope he suffers as much as he made the people suffer. You hate him so much. Everybody hated him. Oh, if I could only lay my hands on him, just once. Ahmed tells Abu that he's the king, but Abu doesn't believe him. Ahmed the king is dead. He died yesterday. There's a new king, Jeffer. Until he sees that a whole army is coming after them and realizes no king would send an army for a 16 year old thief. So this other guy I'm with must be pretty important. So they get on the boat, they go to Basra. In Basra is where Ahmed first lays eyes on the princess. Whose name is not Jasmine. In fact, she doesn't have a name. She's just the princess. Even though Abu wants to go to another town, Ahmad refuses to go until he sees her again. I can't go. I must see her again. But Ahmad, all my life I dreamt of going in a great ship across the world. I can't go. I must see her again. The princess is played by a super hot British actress, June Duprez. <laughs> The princess and all her gal pals are frolicking in their little Garden of Eden quarters, which includes a pool. And they look in the water and they see a reflection of Ahmed's face and they think he's a genie. A genie! They're all scared except for the princess who wants to talk to him. 
Ahmed reveals that he's not a genie. He was just above her in the trees and she was looking at the reflection, but she couldn't tell that the voice was coming. Whatever, it doesn't matter. They talk for like 30 seconds and they both fall in love immediately. <laughs> Done. Who are you? Your slave. Where have you come from? From the other side of time. To find you. How long have you been searching? Since time began. Now that you've found me, how long will you stay? To the end of time. For me, there can be no more beauty in the world. But yours. For me, there can be no more pleasure in the world than to please you. Sorry. We also meet the princess's dad, the Sultan, who's short, stocky, and has this weird obsession with collecting toys. So the next day, Jafar shows up to the Sultan's castle. The Sultan walks around and shows him his toy collection that he's really proud of. And Jafar says, your collection is almost complete, but you need this. A mechanical toy better than, than any of mine? Knowing of your interest in these matters, I have brought it with me. Well, let's see it. Let's see it. Quickly, quickly. And he shows him this mechanical horse that comes to life. The Sultan's amazed by it and wants it immediately. And Jafar says he'll give him the horse in exchange for the princess. The Sultan really wants this horse. So he's like, yeah, sure, you can borrow my daughter, whatever. Are you a magician? I have some skill. Oh, say no more. I, anyhow, I, I must have this horse. So I suppose you must have my daughter. <laughs> princess obviously doesn't want to marry Jafar, so she decides to run away to Samarkand, another city where her sister is living. They search the castle, but they see that the princess has gone missing. The only people they could find were the two beggars, Ahmad and Abu. Not sure what they were doing in the castle. Jafar obviously recognizes them, and because he's like a wizard, he makes Ahmad go blind. And he turns Abu into a dog. The spell can only be broken once Jafar holds the princess in his arms. Then we go back to the present time, because remember, this was all a flashback. Ahmad is still blind, and he's telling the story to the girls, and the girls are like, oh, the princess you're talking about is right here. But she's not a princess. She was actually bought as a slave. But as soon as the princess was taken into the castle, she fell into this deep sleep. She just tosses and turns and talks about the genie in the pool, who was, of course, Ahmed. Ahmad is taken to where the princess is sleeping, and of course, he breaks her out of the spell, and she wakes up. She's so pretty! To find you. How long have you been searching? From the beginning of time. Now that you found me, how long will you stay? Till the end of time. The princess realizes that Ahmad is blind, but she's told there's a doctor that can cure him. They tell her the doctor's on this ship, and she gets on the ship, and Abu, who remembers still a dog, sneaks onto the ship right behind her. Of course, the whole thing was just a trap set by Jafar to keep the princess away from Ahmed. The ship sets sail into the sea. It's kind of hard to say. Abu the dog is captured on the ship and Jafar has him thrown overboard. He confronts the princess and tells her about the spell that he cast on Ahmed and Abu. She allows herself to be embraced so the spell is broken. Take me. It's sad to think she's dead. June Duprez died in 1984. In fact, everybody in this movie's dead. The spell is broken and Ahmad can see again. And Abu is no longer a dog. The two of them reunite and hop on a ship to chase after Jafar and the princess. But Jafar sees them and he uses his wizard powers to cast a storm. shipwrecked. 
Abu washes up on the shores of a deserted island. Ahmad is nowhere to be found. Back on Jafar's ship, the princess is still hella pissed. Why do you refuse to obey your destiny? You behave like a slave girl. I am a slave girl. Wish you were my slave girl. She has to be taken back to Basra, and Jafar complies. The princess tells her dad that she doesn't want to marry Jafar and go to Baghdad, and the sultan, being a good dad, says that she never will. If you don't want to go to Baghdad with him, you shan't. No, never. Never, never, never. Never, 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 never. Never, 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 never. Not while he's alive. The next day, Jafar shows the sultan this new awesome toy. It's a Shiva statue with all these arms that plays the sitar. The sultan's like, oh, what does it do? She can embrace you. But any of my wives would do that. Her embrace will thrill her as no other woman ever has or ever will. Sounds kind of hot. So the sultan, because he's adorable, goes in for a big hug. <laughs> <laughs> and Jafar, because he's evil, commands the statue to take out this hairpin thing and stab the Sultan. <laughs> Spoilers. Back on the deserted island, Abu finds this bottle. He takes the top off the lamp. No, it's a bottle. He takes the top off the bottle, and guess what comes out? First the genie wants to kill Abu, but then Abu outsmarts him and the genie is impressed. So then they're friends. Typical genie style, Abu gets three wishes. Abu's first wish. I wish I had some of those sausages mother used to make. Your sausages, master. I can respect that. Naboo wants to know where his friend Ahmed is. The genie says to know that, you have to look into the all-seeing eye. The all-seeing eye is kept in this palace at the top of a mountain somewhere. So Abu hops on the genie's shoulders and they fly to the top of the world or whatever. Then catch on to my hair. All right, but mind you, this is not my second wish yet. Now I'm rather helping you. Yes, master. This sequence has some of the coolest special effects in the movie. It was actually the first movie ever to use this blue screen technology. Of course, it was kind of primitive, so you can still see a blue outline on a lot of the characters when they're overlaid over other things. If you're interested in the history of the special effects, I'm gonna put a link down below in the description that talks about the history of blue screen and, and how this movie broke the mold and how things were done. It's optional. So the genie drops off a boo at this temple thing so he can get the the magic eye. There's this cool little action scene where Abu fights off a giant spider. finally climbs up to the thing and gets the eye. Abu looks into the all-seeing eye. He sees that Ahmed is wandering around this mountainous landscape. It kind of looks like the Grand Canyon. Now my second wish, take me to him. Two years to obey, little master of the world. Abu and Ahmed reunite. Abu only has one wish left. Ahmed says he only has one wish, to see the princess again. And Abu's like, hey, I don't need to waste a wish. You can just look into the all-seeing eye and, and see what she's up to. The princess is in her garden and she's looking at a blue rose. Blue rose? I've heard about that. that that's the blue rose of forgetfulness. If she inhales its fragrance, she'll forget everything. 
princess forgets everything. She forgets who she is, she forgets who Ahmed is, she forgets who Jafar is. Ahmad is really upset at seeing this, and he starts to get into this little tiff with Abu. Without my stealing, you'd be dead. I wish I were dead. I wish I'd never seen you. I wish... I wish I went back dead. I wish you were. Oops. The genie has granted his three wishes, so he's free and he pieces out. Meanwhile, Jafar is brainwashing the princess, whose memory was wiped, and he's like, Oh, you've always loved me. We're in love. You, you fucking love me. But remember that Abu accidentally wished for Ahmed to be back in Baghdad. Conveniently, Ahmed shows up right next to them. Ahmed calls out for the princess. She hears his voice and immediately remembers everything about the past, how she loves him, all that. Ahmed fights off all the palace guards, and there's like swashbuckling and sword fighting. What is swashbuckling? Can only pirates do that? Or Anyway, Jafar shows up and he says, put them both in prison. They're both sentenced to death. Death! He's tied up all heroic style. She's tied up all innocent bondage style. Abu is watching all this in the all-seeing eye and he's so upset that he throws it and shatters it. As soon as he shatters the gem thing, he's transported to this other magical land and he's greeted by the old king who thanks him because Apparently, everybody in the town was like turned to stone and shattering the gem freed them. And so now they're treating Abu like he's a god, whatever. But he gets a reward, which is this magical crossbow. So they give him the crossbow and the magical arrows and they're like, oh, you're our new king. Everything in the kingdom is yours, except for that magic carpet. Don't touch that. And all in our kingdom is yours, except that carpet. That's my carpet, but Abu's a thief, so he takes the carpet. Ahmed and the princess are about to be executed when Abu shows up on the magic carpet. Abu uses the, the crossbow to shoot the executioner. All hell breaks loose. Jafar tries to escape and fly off on the magical horse from earlier. But Abu nails him with the crossbow and he's dead. Next day, the king, Ahmed is king again. He's got the girl, everybody's happy. He says he's gonna make Abu his own grand vizier, but for the meantime, he's gonna send him to school. Abu's like, no, uh, I'm not going to school. And he runs off and he gets on the carpet and he flies away, that little rascal. Hey, Abu, where are you going? You've got what you wanted. Now, I'm going to find what I want. What's that? Some fun, an adventure at last. Can you see the goosebumps? Goosebumps. Man, this movie is just awesome. You know, I actually wasn't really looking forward to doing this episode, because I had already seen this movie before a few weeks ago, and I thought going through it again would be kind of tedious and not that fun. But as soon as I started watching it, I just fell right back into its spell. I loved it. I highly recommend you watch it. Even the writing and the dialogue is fantastic. There's lines that are, that are really gonna stick with you, and the emotion, and it's so romantic, and it turns you into a little weepy bitch. Seriously awesome movie. So that's The Thief of Baghdad. Next episode, we're going to take things in a very different direction. We're going to be watching Trash Humpers. I don't know what else you expected. This was actually a suggestion from a friend, and I'm really looking forward to it. I don't know anything about it, except that it's directed by Harmony Korin, a Korine, who makes some really weird movies that I actually really like. Gummo, featuring this weird-looking kid, is one of my favorites. He also wrote Kids, which is another great movie. Kind of depressing. So we'll talk about Trash Humpers next time. In the meantime, tell me what you thought of The Thief of Baghdad. And definitely like the video. And subscribe. And send me money through PayPal. Buy me a car. Okay. Bye. You stay where you are. You're a clever little man, little master of the universe. But mortals are weak and frail. If their stomach speaks, they forget their brain. If their brain speaks, they forget their hearts. And if their hearts speak... <laughs> if their hearts speak, they forget everything!